right, welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. It's episode 81. <sighs> 1981. 81. We're in 1981. 1981. All the right. era of... I was in sixth grade. Yes. Mr. Hermanek. All right. All right. I was <laughs> never reading poetry. I was, I was three. I think All I was right. starting to think about He-Man and uh, wow, maybe Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Nice. I was into it, man. Nice. All right. So uh, I've picked the poem this week. Mike has not read it. This is called Ice Men by James Longenbach. Here we go. One cuts blocks from the abundant river hauls them house to house. One falls unseen, the heart inoculated cold against a sky still moving. Moving even now above the river, the canal, willows shimmering across the water, muskrats diving out of reach, the river whispers till it freezes. A body twirling sluggishly beneath the surface as again one stack, then spreads the straw. Another falters, slips, or puts a sliver on your tongue to feel it melting there, the isolate underworld of someone else. <laughs> okay. Iceman. Well, yeah. I read that title, and that reminded me of this documentary I, call, I, I saw called The Iceman, and he was a mob hitman. Oh. And he used to, uh, his specialty was he would take people and put them into... He had this cave that he had found, <laughs> and he would get a bunch of rats, and Aww. then he would put them into this like cave kind of a deal and seal it and let the rats kill the guy. Wow. And that was his that's thing. Horrible. And he also shot people and did other yeah. sort of things. But so as soon as, and that's my bias, as soon as yeah, I saw Iceman, or it's some guy who drives a Zamboni or something. Yeah. But, but then I don't when think I, that's in any way what this is <laughs> referring <sorry. laughs> to. No, that's no, because that's Maybe what I you do, right? Yeah. I and mean, you try I mean, to use, yeah. activate your background knowledge. Right, right. right. And, and obviously I was completely wrong, correct. which then makes the poem even better. Um, one cuts blocks from the abundant river, hauls them house to house. So and that there's makes this perfect one, sense. Right, I can picture that. And yeah. then it's one, one, one. And then when it gets to the body twirling sluggishly, that to me was the t was the turn. But that's in this the poem. one that fell unseen, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. one guy, one person, one ice man cuts it, mm -hmm. the ice, right? And it's kind of like the movie. Is it Frozen? Where it's got all the guys yes, cutting the, the ice? Yeah, and they're singing. That's and, what I instantly yes, thought of, right? right? Right. But one guy falls into the water, mm, okay. and then that's okay. his body floating there underneath the ice. I read it as the block trapped. falls unseen, but that makes total sense now right um against the sky so still moving kind of weirdly mystical mysterious mm -hmm. and again i kept thinking of the scenes from frozen because that would be my <laughs> only experience with this kind of scenery i mean i don't yeah. know anything about iceman yeah um but then the last half to me becomes so strange mm -hmm. um a body twirling sluggishly beneath the surface as again one stack so like the surface has refrozen, mm -hmm. and it's again just one stack of ice. Is that what that means? Then spreads then, the straw. So I'm assuming the straw would be in between each block of ice so that they don't yeah, you know, somehow freeze walking, together. Yeah. So it's like they just keep on working. You know, the guy dies or falls into the river, and it just yeah. continues. And then the weird, all of a sudden, another falter slips or puts a sliver on your tongue. Mm -hmm. And you now, right, you the reader, are, in are somehow scene. now implicated mm -hmm. in the scene. And why would one of the Icemen put a sliver? I'm thinking it's like a child. Right, another falter slips, so it's another Iceman goes down. Right, or is, start, right, or mm -hmm. is kind of, it's edgy, it's dangerous. Right. Or one of them puts a sliver on your tongue to feel it melting there. Mm -hmm. But the your... Like yeah. that, that those Suddenly two lines are so strange. Yeah, we're inserted into the poem. I, I thought of the um, uh, when you're going across the the river of the dead in Greek mythology, oh. and you have to put the coin under your tongue oh. so that you can pay the the toll to See, get across. Background knowledge may be working. Ah, whoa! <laughs> oh my God! Case. After I read it about the fifth time, um, huh. but then yeah, the isolate underworld of someone else, maybe meaning. As you said, that's not our experience. We've never been ice men. I've never right. seen them working or doing what they do. So it's like, I'm going to pull you into this poem, and you're going to experience another person's underworld, Somehow, because, another person's experience. Right, but what is the it? So if you put, mm -hmm. it puts a sliver on your tongue to feel it melting there. So you think, okay, the sliver is the it, right? The sliver is the, is the ice, to the right. It, to feel it moving there. But then that dash... Mm -hmm. The dash implies that what you're feeling there is the isolate underworld of someone else. Mm -hmm. 
So when you taste the ice, you're tasting the, the underworld. ice lit under. But what is ice lit? Uh, it's, is that like it's, if you're underwater, the ice is lighting your world, right? Because the moon is reflecting on the ice, which yes, goes light into the is water. Coming through it. Right. Right. Dare I make an '80s reference since we're in episode '81? I don't know. If I don't is, see how you can stop. Is this okay? Is this okay? <laughs> as long as you don't bust into. I want to say song. the original Superman with Christopher Reeves, either one or two. Yeah. When he's oh, fighting the Fortress of Solitude, the Fortress of Solitude right? Yeah. The crystals. I picture something like that. I'm where... pretty sure that's what James Long and Bach. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, James. <laughs> but this is from but the Isolate Underworld. I picture that. You know, like you're you're down. Uh, yeah. Under there, it's, it's crystal. It's 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 beautiful. Well, but, that would be a better thing to imagine than a man freezing to death alone underwater, right? Like to yes. turn the death into something beautiful, maybe? Yeah. Right, it, mean, it, it becomes so mysterious because it's so simple. Right, but it's so horrifying. And it's the I think the pronoun is a little bit confusing. The dash is confusing. Right, and just that description when I read it again, the body twirling sluggishly. Yeah. Oh, I can picture that whole thing beneath the surface. I mean, that's like talk about your worst nightmare. And how do you falling under ice? You can't get right, like out. That's, that's I mean, kind of a I think he's already dead, and the no, water right, but is like twirling. I think is fast. Yes, but sluggishly, so he's just slow. like slowly spinning. How does I he mean, do it? Like this, maybe to the <laughs> left. <laughs> Some ar 80s aerobics going right. on there. All right. It's an 80s, 80s episode. I've been listening to a lot of Olivia Newton John. You have to hey, understand that that's really fate, where that I'm is. coming from. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, on that note, thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com.